Here's why you should beware of the Pleiades. Today we will be looking at the chart of Jeffrey Epstein. So welcome my friends, we're going to dive into a little bit of dark stuff here and I'm probably going to challenge a few status quo points of view in the spiritual community, if you can really call it that. And uh, we're going to look into the Pleiades and how they manifest in different ways. Of course, we looked at Taylor Swift's chart uh, a few days ago. Look at those videos, if you like, for another view of the Pleiades, because she has them too. And in a female chart and a male chart, the Pleiades are very different. And that's because they're ruled by the planet Mars, who is actually a feminine planet or a nighttime, a night, a yin nighttime kind of planet. It's not so much a passive, it is a masculine kind of force, but it belongs to the nighttime sect, which is it's very interesting kind of way to reflect it. Anyway, I'll shut up now. Let's dive in. So here's the chart. Here's our man, our least favorite man. <laughs> Jesus. It's uh, yeah, quite the, quite the topic. And as you can see over there on the left-hand side, I'll open this off my computer actually, here we have the Pleiades, you can see there, Ple Pleiades, exactly on his setting horizon. That's what this curve is here. That's the setting horizon. And there is Aldebaran and the belt of Orion as well. So, <coughs> pardon me. So these are wealth stars, actually, Aldebaran and the belt, big wealth stars. So that's why he's so wealthy. You know, he literally owns islands. Ha <laughs> ha. And then the Pleiades on the Descendant. Now, in a male chart, these can be very dark. They are actually one of the most consistent themes in the, ch in the, in the charts of serial killers, who are, of course, generally male. So Mars, and usually it's, you know, an angle or the sun, an angle. So Ascendant, MC, in this case, the Descendant, the sun or the moon, or... Mars in the Pleiades. And the reason Mars is important there is because Mars rules the Pleiades. Mars and the moon rule the Pleiades. A good friend of mine actually has Mars and the moon in conjunction in the Pleiades. Have, luckily, she is a female, so she's not a serial killer or even too much of a manipulator. She's just a very, very intense witch with a lot of magical abilities and uh, interest in esoteric arts. So obviously for women, the Pleiades are much kinder, but for men, wow, as you can see here, very nasty, very, very, very nasty. So he was born at night. <clears throat> he also has the horns of Capricorn down here with the sun. He was born January 20th, which it is almost January 20th today. <laughs> so uh, that's why he's coming up now into the collective consciousness and I think Pluto is exactly conjunct with his son. So that's very interesting. And uh, what was I going to say? And the horns of Capricorn are very similar to the Pleiades. They can also be very dark if the rest of the chart, you know, goes that way. Uh, and they also rule a strong sexual passion. So, you know, the person will be very sexual, have strong sexual forces to dominate as well as black esoteric interests or or sensitivity to black magic. I also have the horns of Capricorn. But you see with the Pleiades and the horns of Capricorn, they're neutral. They're not good or bad either way. The person has to choose between good and evil. And the rest of the chart will probably show us whether they will choose, which one they will choose. So here we have uh, the, la the other thing. Well, there's a couple more things that are interesting. One is that he's born around the eclipse time. So he wasn't born inside an eclipse, but maybe a week after he's born, a bit more than a week, there was a lunar eclipse up here in Cancer with the south node uh, because the sun is with the north node and then the full moon is the moon opposite the sun, which creates this eclipse when they're on the, when they're on the, the lunar nodes. And there's a whole reason for that. I'll explain that in another video. So another interesting small thing, well, two, let's do two at the same time here, actually. So we talked about the Pleiades. The Pleiades are also stars of liars and manipulators. In this case, some pretty dark stuff, you know, <laughs> very, very dark stuff. <clears throat> 
on his MC, he has Zosma, the hind or the back of the lion, the back of Leo, which is a star of astrology and esoteric knowledge. And look, it's almost an inexact conjunction. So it's very, very, very strong. So this guy was, this guy was definitely, definitely, definitely involved in, uh, how should we call it, black occult practices, rituals. Yeah, this guy had a lot of interest in the invisible world. Because then also on the ascendant is the sacred zone of Scorpio. So the Pleiades, magic and manipulation. The horns of Capricorn, magic and sexual desires. The Zosma, esoteric knowledge. And the crown of Scorpio, this is meditation, willpower. Uh, it's another es sort of sacred zone, esoteric zone. So he's got a lot of pull towards these different spiritual paths, which is very interesting to see how far he fell, right? Very, very, very interesting. But he was probably quite well studied, perhaps it looks like, in all kinds of sexual black magic, actually. And the reason I know that is because look at his IC at the bottom here. Mars and Venus exactly conjunct in the sacred degree of Aquarius, which is the sacred degree of the golden age of Aquarius. So whatever this guy's deeds were, they are linked with the golden age, not in a good way, obviously. Uh, they could have been. They could have been. He could have been a saint, a saint <clears throat> if he had the right force, you know, if he had the right uh, guidance, the right karma, the right... Uh, the right help, and clearly he didn't. He didn't, and I need to look at this chart some more so I can get a more full picture of everything going on. But yeah, this you know, if I if I if somebody came to me with this chart in a reading, I would say yeah, this is definitely the choice between good or evil, and you've got to really rein in your sexuality. And if you can do that, then you'll make massive achievements in the spiritual realm. And if you don't, then big trouble will follow. If you don't rein in your urges, this will amass a huge karmic debt, probably, which is what's going on here. Um, so it could have gone either way. And we obviously, you know, the fat lady sung, so we know how this has gone. And Venus and Mars are the lovers, sexuality, another marker of a strong sexual urge. And because they're in the sacred zone, this is the zone of wisdom, he probably was very involved in uh, black sexual sexual magic. Let's call it sexual magic because there's a lot. There's a lot of wow. Sexual magic is massively popularized these days, and I wonder what you know these big guys in the upper echelons what they're doing because they've got access. They have access to give you an idea. They have access to all kinds of knowledge of astrology that I couldn't even dream of. They have so much crap hidden away in their vaults that would be so useful that uh, it just it, it, the mind completely boggles. They know so much. Of course, that means they, they do need scholars who are skilled enough to interpret these texts properly, but that's another matter. They have these things, and so, of course, they know all about this stuff, some of them. <clears throat> Here is one for sure. So... It's really, uh, I, yeah, I'm kind of <laughs> kind of lost for words now. I don't really know what to say. Uh, but you can see the intensity of that chart. I am going to do a really, really proper deep dive. We'll look at his death and everything and the, prim and the primary directions, these ancient predictive techniques that have been used for thousands of years. We'll look at how they play out in his chart. I'll do a bit, of, a bit more research about his actual life so I can... <laughs> so I can actually know what I'm talking about more. But uh, at, at the first glance, that chart is really startling and makes a lot of sense. Really, really, really makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, what else can I say? I think, yeah, I think I think we're there, you know. Well, just that the, the, the sins that Venus, Mars, and the Sacred Zone indicates a very uh, definitely the sin through sex. Uh, but chance for redemption as well. 
but obviously you know that that's over now but there was a chance for redemption whatever that looked like i don't know i don't know what it was but there was something um Wow, I keep losing my train of thought with this one. All these, I'm getting pump wave, I'm getting black magic attacked. Uh, anyway, I just got a fit. Fucking hell. Wow. So weird. Venus and Mars in the sacred zone of Aquarius. I'm just lost. My mind is just gone. All right, well, I'll finish it up and I'll continue this in another longer video. God bless you, my friends. Leave a like and subscribe. Please do that. That really, really helps me out. And uh, if you want to book a session or get the longer video on my Patreon, you can check out the link in the description of this video. Everything will be there. I love you. And God bless you. May you always find the right way. I'm on. Bye-bye.